Hi guys, it's uh, Steve from MasterModUK.com here again. Today we're going to put together a video installation guide for our X1 Fusion mod chip, as you can see in front of us now. Okay, let's put, pull that one to one side. Um, this is just really going to be um, an overview of you watching me uh, do one of my installs on an Xbox One controller. It's a brand new Xbox One controller we've got in, in front of us, just a standard controller. Um, there is also on our website at mastermoduk.com uh, a full step-by-step -step illustrated and written um, installation guide with the all-important wiring diagrams. Please make sure you follow the wiring diagram. Don't just try to, to see what pins I'm connecting to. Um, please make sure you follow the wiring diagram as well as this video. This video really is just to kind of show you an overview of what to expect, what you will need to do to install the modchip in your controller, okay? As I'm going, um, we're videoing with um, a pair of pivot head uh, HD sunglasses with the lenses removed. Um, hopefully you'll be seeing what I'm seeing. If I do go astray at any point, apologies if I do start to look left or right or I'm not in the right place, but hopefully you'll get a first uh, um, my point of view as actually as we're doing the install, okay? Right, without further ado, let's crack on. First things we need to do, obviously if you look on the back, pop off the battery case, put to one side. These two, can't, obviously you can't see the screws, there's two caps either side that you need to pop off. You can either use your nails if you've got decent nails, I haven't, um, or a plastic aping tool or just a good old flat bladed screwdriver. As long as you're careful, you won't mark up the um, the plastic on this. So just go, you wanna go once in the top here and once in the top, uh, in the towards the bottom there. So all you're gonna do is just push down slightly, bit of pressure, lever backwards, and you'll see him pop up, famous last words. There we go, and then once towards the bottom too, and he comes off nice and easy. And exactly the same on the opposite side, bit of pressure downwards, lever up, same on towards the bottom, bit of pressure, lever up, off he comes. Okay, so you can see we've got one, two, sorry, it's one, two, three, four, four screws in the bottom corners, and there's also one hidden just here behind this one. <coughs> uh, the Torx T8 screwdrivers, uh, Sorry, Torx T8 screws. It's a good idea when you're taking your screws out to have a little pot or something like this to obviously make sure they don't get lost. So bear with me as we just pop the four screws out. Okay, so once you've got those four screws out, there's one behind, as Microsoft always do this, it did the same with the 360, they pop one behind the sticker. Um, you can, if you want to keep your sticker intact, you can, if you're very careful, just peel down on the top corner, pull it across to reveal the screw. Um, if you're not worried about punching all through, then you can just, uh, you can you can feel where it is if you need to. Um, for me, I've done so many, I can just tell, you just pop straight through and on the screw. Okay, and that's the last screw. Okay, once you've undone the last screw, you'll find that the front shell, the front half of the shell, will now just lift off, nice and easy. The, sh the shell on the um, on the X1 controllers are really easy to take apart. Um, pop off your thumbsticks just to make sure they don't get damaged. Now if you just lift up, you'll find Microsoft to put all of the buttons and things this time all in one plastic housing. The rear case comes off. Get your remaining screws that were stuck still in the shell. Pop out that middle one. Okay, so this is what we're working with. We need to take our rumble, rumble motors out now. Obviously they're still attached, so we need to unsolder those. And Microsoft have put these great rumble motors in the triggers as well. So we need to just disconnect those as well. <coughs> so let's start with our soldering iron. So this isn't gonna be a guide on how to solder. This is really, like I said, just gonna be an overview of how to do the install, okay? So if you don't know how to solder, then you need to check out some soldering videos first. There we 
we go. So once we've got all four rumble motors disconnected, um, there's two screws left. Microsoft, a bit pointless if you ask me these screws, because um, once it's all in place, this, the, the circuit board can't come out anyway, but they've put another screw on each of the bottom corners of this U-shaped circuit board. Um, they are normally Torx T6, however, occasionally you'll find that Microsoft randomly put um, an Allen key one, there you go, that one's a, a the same size as a T6, I'm not sure actually what the, the correct sizing is for it, but it's a, a small Allen key type screw on that one, and let's see what they've put on this one, yep, and this one we've got two Allen keys. Um, you'll find, like I said, randomly they'll put a small Torx T6 or T7 uh, screw in there. Um, the majority seem to be Allen keys, but sometimes you'll have one Allen key and one uh, one and one Torx. It seems crazy, but they just seem to do it randomly. Okay, that's all disconnected now. The main part we want to work with is this back U-shaped PCB here that I'm looking at, hopefully you can see. Um, so we want to lift that one out in a minute, just by lifting them up, and then we'll take them out from the circuit board, from the front circuit board, and plug them. Um, first of all, before you do that, as a good idea, take your chip, because what we want to do is find out where we want to put them. We want to put them over here. And what we want to make sure is that it doesn't foul against the trigger when we um, when we pull them down. So it's a good idea to put your chip in place. Just put some hot melt glue. It's cool, just running out of hot glue. Put another stick in in a second. Put a bit of hot glue on the bottom of your chip, and then put them down <coughs> in place so you can see that it's not striking, not interfering with the. Uh, with the trigger when you're pulling them down. So now he's in place. Yep, got him stuck down. Now just give the U-shaped board a little wiggle and up, tip, and out he comes, okay? This is the one we're gonna be working with. You can see there's two sockets, two plug sockets that match these two plug sockets, and that's what plugs into this board when you put it back in and pull it out. Right, we don't need this half for now. We'll put that one away. And we're gonna be working majority of this video is going to be working on the back and front of this circuit board, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. With your chip now glued in place, what we're going to be doing is I'd like to just prep my chip by pushing those. If you look at the wiring diagram, there's um, the trigger connections take two pins. So what I do is just bend those two pins together. Hopefully that's showing on the camera. It makes it a lot easier to connect one wire then rather than two. The same on the bottom here. It's one, two, three, four. It's pin three and four from the bottom. On this side again. Just push them together, and then we can make our first solder connections. So the first connection is to the top. This is going to be our earth or ground for the pin. And when you're routing your wires, guys, just try and you know just place them how you want them to, where you want them to finish, and then cut them to length. Make sure you've got enough wire. Then you're not going to be pulling on it, tugging on it. And another tip: when you're stripping your wire. Use a pair of nose pliers or something similar, so that when you are then stripping, you're pulling against your nose pliers, not pulling against your solder connection you've just made. So there's no danger of you snapping your solder connection. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a dry throat this morning. <coughs> okay, layer the wire where you want it to go. On this, go into the earth connection, ground, bit of solder, drop them. <coughs> Next up is our trigger connection. So again, same thing. Strip for the for the pins on here. I strip about four mil of wire. Doesn't have to be exact, obviously. Just you know, about the length of the pin, or just under the length of the pin, is what you want to be stripping back. And with this connection, you need to make sure that you're soldering. Obviously, the wire to the pin, but also put a little extra solder over the tip of the pin to also make sure you're joining those two pins together as well. Okay? 
and again just root your wire this one's quite a small connection this one we're going to the top load of black component up here so if we cut him to length look at um, what you're connecting to and then decide how much wire you want to strip so for this is only a tiny little connection so we only want to strip probably two or three mil probably not going to be able to see what I'm doing with this one I want to thought because it's very small but like I said make sure as well as viewing this that you follow our wiring diagram so you can see exactly where you're connecting to I'm not just guessing from this video okay hopefully you can see that connection there <coughs> okay you don't have to do your wiring in this order the same that I'm doing it now you can do it in any order you want really um, this is just my preferred order that I like to do it in so I like to do all the connections really on the back of the board and then flip over and do the ones on the front so that's the ones that side next we start on this bottom side too if you shape the wire it helps obviously when you hold it against it, it makes life a bit easier too Okay, this is our right trigger connection, which is just here. <clears throat> if you're beginning to look at this and think, this isn't for me, this is too much from my capabilities we do also obviously have brand new pre-modified controllers that we sell <coughs> and we do also offer a sending service a mod service for your own controller where you can send it in and we'll do this for you but if you um if you not too bad for soldering iron and you've got 20 30 minutes that you can spare obviously this is a lot cheaper alternative uh, this we're going over to the right stick, sorry left stick connection now. <clears throat> Apologies, I got a really dry throat this morning. Again, you don't have to root the wires exactly as I am. You can root them how you wish. There's only two important parts really you need to steer clear of, and that's <coughs> these two black pads. They're just um, rubber strike pads. It's for where your triggers strike down against. Um, so it's not an electrical component that you're going to interfere with. It's just obviously if you've got wires on these pads and you're striking against them all the time, you're going to damage them. So obviously just make sure you root your wires as I have here around those black pads, not across the black pads. This is our left-sided trigger connection. And again with this one, make sure you run a bit of wire, I'm oh sorry, a bit of solder over the top of those pins to make sure they're joined together nicely too. Again, it's quite small for the trigger connection, so you're just stripping a couple of mil of wire for this one. I'm going to the top pin this time. I know I keep saying it, but please don't just follow what I'm doing on the video. Make sure you follow our um, online step by step illustrated guide as well, so you can double check so you know what pins you're connecting to. And it's got the full wiring installation and wiring diagram on there as well. But I've managed to load some more glue into the 
hot melt glue gums were just running out. Okay. Um, up to you if you do what I'm doing here. Basically, I just put, like to put a little bit of hot melt glue just to hold my wires in place. I like to root them as you can see couple of tacks of hot melt glue just to make sure they're not wandering around they're going to get tugged against anything okay that's all the connections on the back of the PCB <coughs> we're now going to flip the PCB over and start our connections on the front um, again up to you which way you want to do it I like to start with the top of this middle connector here you'll see hopefully if I can get this to the camera these connections are quite small so take care obviously try not to bridge them if you do it's not the end of the world um, on our guide we show how to unsolder a bridge you only want to strip about two three mil of wire for each one of these and you want to come in this way don't come in sideways to them come in from the bottom and go straight on it and draw away okay don't be tempted to go in across you'll just end up bridging connections straight in draw away <clears throat> Okay, the first one we're going to do here is a ground connection or earth connection. Okay, it's a good idea once you've made your connection to give it a little tug. Not hard, obviously, we don't pull it off, but just a little tug just to make sure that you've got a good strong connection and it's not just what we call a cold solder um, where it's just the solder is just stuck on top and it's not actually fused in with the the metal that's already there this one is going to the same earth connection that we um, put for our chip so just a very quick dab of solder on there And on to the next one. Sorry, bear me, I'm trying to put the soldering iron back without turning my head too much so you guys don't keep getting whiplash every time I turn. Um, okay, run your wire across. <coughs> Again, just think where you want your wires to run. Run them in, in a, a nice, neat route that you're happy with. Bend them in shape so that then when they bend down, they're already going where you want them to go. Run a little bit of solder up here. <coughs> okay, and apologies if I am missing any of this. My mobile phone's going off. Um, if I am missing any of this, I'm not looking quite in the right places. Apologies, hopefully, you are getting the majority of what we're trying to see though here. Like all of the pins and what we're going to here. Follow the um, follow the dying wire. Get my words out. Wiring diagram for that, just to ensure you are getting exactly the right thing. I would hate for someone just to try and follow what I'm doing here, and obviously it can be quite difficult to see exactly what pin I'm going to. So the best way to do it, to use this as a as a general guide. See what it's going to tell and what you should be doing. But make sure you use our wiring diagram to confirm exactly what pin and where you should be going to.
This last one from that connector goes to the other side of the chip. So again, just root it where you would like it to run. Snip it to length, strip your wire, and connect. <coughs> And as you just see me do then, just you know, just shape the wire with your finger and thumb. It makes life easier than when you put it in place. It's already in the shape you want it to be. Okay, that's all of the connections from this top uh, this top connector here. If you've got any loose solder just in between, just make sure. You just pick it off, make sure you've got a bit of gap between the wires. Okay. And then what I like to do again, personal preference up to you if you do this, bring in our hot melt glue. And I just like to put a little bit of glue over the tops of these wires, just to make sure they're not going to get tugged, not going to get fouled. They're secure in place. We don't have to make those connections ever again. They're done and they will stay there. <coughs> okay. Next, onto this connector over here. If you get any of your hot melt glue, you get what I call snail trails, just try to pick them off as you go, okay? So keep it nice and tidy. Excuse my dog's probably barking at the posty. Okay, so we're going to start with the bottom connections on here. We've got three connections to make on the bottom of this plug. First two, I'll go on over to here. Do you think these are A and X buttons, if I remember correctly? Okay, just shaping the wire so when we hold it in place, it lies nice and neatly against the pin of the chip, Just run a little solder up against it, drop them. Be careful with the next one because the next wire is going to go right next to the one we've just done. The next pin along. There's not a great deal of room so I would suggest making sure you come in kind of just like slight, slightly to one side. So this one over here. Make sure you have a nice clean solder on your soldering tip as well every time you do one of these connections. It will just make it take a lot quicker and easier. Okay. <coughs> if you're an old soldering pro, I'm sure you know exactly how I'm soldering. Um, some people might look at this that have just done sort of limited soldering and think, why isn't he holding solder in one hand and feeding it in and holding the soldering iron with the other hand, which is obviously the most conventional method of soldering. The way I do it is obviously a lot easier because you have one hand free to hold your wire and one hand to put your put your solder on. Um, all I do is buy a tip, obviously tin your tip first, and then I like to file it down into a point. So I use a wider chisel tip and then file it to a point. That way with a chisel tip you can load solder onto the chisel tip rather than just a, a point you can't load. If you just have a, a needle tip you can obviously can't load any solder onto the tip. I'm trying to show you what I mean. Um, whereas with this one I can load solder onto the tip. <coughs> I've shaped it into a point so we can still get our nice fine soldering and that way makes life a hell of a lot easier or well, I think so anyway but you can obviously do the conventional method if that's the way you've always done your soldering you can also do it that way as well either way that you feel comfortable with at the end of the day okay that's the, the three from the bottom over here again personal preference I like to put a bit of solder not right up over the, the actual connections that we've just made just 
four or five mil down so it's just across the wire and again we know then they're not going to come off they're not going to get tugged away um, they're going to stay in place for as long as we've got this controller this is our power connection the V plus on the wiring diagram voltage plus again route it however you wish this is just the way that I like to route it Okay, last few connections to make off the top of this connector now, this plug-in connector, and then we're getting towards the end. If you um, if you knock your sticks down like this, it doesn't matter. Um, once they get back in, it's not a problem. So don't go panicking and thinking you've broken anything. With these, I would definitely suggest these two connections putting a spot of hot glue before you continue. The reason being, I'll show you now. We're going to tug to the side. Obviously, if we're tugging sideways on that connection, that can uh, obviously break it off. So just now we're tugging against the glue instead. I'm going to bring it around to the side and connect to our chip. Apologies for all the odd sound you're hearing now and then. It's, um, it's my mobile phone in my pocket, I'm afraid. <coughs> okay, this is the last connection from this plug. Again, with this one, I like to. I would definitely suggest putting the hot glue on this one. If you're doing it on any of the others, up to you. On this one, I would definitely suggest putting some hot glue. Again, because we're pulling sideways against these. Get rid of these snail trails. <clears throat> we're going sideways around this one, onto the back. Okay, we are nearly there guys. Okay, last one we need to make. Uh, it's quite small so hopefully this will show up on the camera. This is your B button where it comes down onto. <coughs> you need to take a craft knife, exacto knife, something like that with a nice point. And this black carbon disc, black carbon contact pad on the left of this, of this button as we're looking at it we need to scratch away just a tiny bit of the bottom of it okay you can scratch up to half of it away leave some of the carbon there though don't scratch all of it away you don't get carried away otherwise your B button won't work okay don't want to put you off with that L literally just scratch away a little bit at the bottom all you need is a little bit of copper showing <coughs> so that we can make our solder connection to it so you don't need to scrape away all of the carbon just a little bit off the bottom until you see that nice fresh copper coming through. Okay, there we go. 
Um, you can connect straight to there if you like, so I suspect most of you aren't going to have what I'm now about to use. Um, obviously because I do loads of these, um, I have what we call liquid flux. That's not black rubbish on top, it's just a bit of liquid flux in the bottle here. Um, it really just cleans the contact, it's just to ensure we get a nice long life contact on there with no corrosion or anything at all so you don't have to use that if you want to you can um, you can buy it on eBay you can buy a little a little bottle of it for around uh, I think it's about 99p or a pound or something like that <coughs> and all it does is just clean the copper um, just etches the copper to make sure you get a nice connection to it um, like I said don't worry if you don't have it to hand because you don't need to use it it's just um, it's just personal preference okay so just tin that and then off your wire to it and there we go just give it a tug yep got a good connection there try to keep that connection nice and small and tidy and nice and flat because off your button striking down on top of that by button or what I mean there's only the rubber it's obviously not plastic striking against the heart it's just the rubber going down on top so it's not going to cause any damage at all that now once we connect this one is the last connection before we can put our board back in. So if you're still with us this far and you've uh, not got fed up with the sound of my voice and me probably looking at everything except what we're supposed to be looking at, then um, well done. Except that's the last connection from this board. So now we can bring the plastic housing back over and we can pop our board back in. Okay, so all you need to do get it back in line, use the um <coughs> the connector at the bottom as a guide. Once you've got them in line, because what we're gonna do is obviously plug those plugs back into the sockets in the other half of the board. Once you've got them in place, just give it a bit of a squeeze down, you'll see it goes nice and flat against here nice and flat against the top part here. Once it's flat you know that we've got those plugs pushed back in. There's one last connection that we need to make to the chip which is our LED connection. The LED connection comes off of the top metal prong on this black component here. Again you need to strip about two mil of wire for this. So you need a small connection. Again, you can route your wire whichever way you want. Don't go over this black hole in the middle because obviously that's where your screw comes through. Um, so you obviously don't want to be slicing through your wire when you put the screw back in. So just make sure it goes to the side. <coughs> and strip the end. And this is the last connection you're going to be making to the chip. After that, we're just going to be putting the rumble motors back, um, connecting the shell back up, and we're done. Okay, so that's all the wiring done. Now what we do is connect the trigger rumble motors. If you can't remember which way you took them off, it's black, goes to the outside. This is the same for both sides, left and right. If you've got wire over them, obviously just move it to one side. And the grey is innermost. Okay, spin them around. Same on the other side. Grey innermost, <coughs> and the black on the outer edge. Now we can pop our rumble motors back in. If you can't remember, as I'm looking at it now, the the one with the larger cam is on our left hand side. Okay. <coughs> uh, again with this. It was clever, I managed to solder them together as I took them off. Uh, the red wire on this side goes to the bottom. This it's not so important with this to be honest um, with all these rumble motors. If you connect them around the wrong way, i.e. red and black top and bottom, 
um, all that means is they'll spin the opposite direction so it's not the end of the world you'll still get the rumble exactly the same which means it'll be spinning the opposite way around okay so on that one if you want to know you want to put back as it was though it's red bottom black top on this side is the opposite way around red top black bottom <clears throat> and that's it, that's all the soldering we need to do. Okay, so let's put them in. And we can put them back in the case now. So just flip them over, drop them back down in bottom edge first. You see it won't sit in any way. When you look to the top, make sure you've got your two battery terminals through. If they're on the other side, obviously just take it off again and put them back through the correct side. You see the top doesn't want to go down at the moment. Just press your triggers down, then it will sit down in nicely, okay? Tuck your rumble motor wires back in so it's nice and tidy. And then you can drop, oh, nearly forgot a thumbsticks, put the thumbsticks back on. And drop the housing over the front. Just keep the housing pressed on the front. Get your screws. And the first screw to put in, I would suggest, is going to be your middle one. Because that will hold that front face plate back in place. Okay, so now it won't come off because we're held in place. And then just continue putting your four screws back in. Okay, whilst I'm doing this guys, like I said, um, this has been a video installation guide by myself, Steve, from MasterModsUK.com. It's MasterModsUK, all one word, then .com. Um, you can either go direct to our website to view our products, uh, we've got PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PlayStation 3. <coughs> All the screws back in place. Um, we also sell through eBay as well. Master Mods UK is our eBay username too. Um, that's literally it guys. Okay, just pop your cases back on now. Um, push them back down in place. Same with the other side. I'd suggest starting from the outside. Just push down. You'll hear them all clip in. And we're done. That's it. Go and enjoy your hard work.